Hey there, Postal here. Today we're going to take a look at the Heinkel HE100D-1. This is a Tier 5 premium German fighter. And we're going to take a look and see if it's worth anything. Let's go. Well, this one's going to be rough. Uh, we are a non-specialized tier 5 mediocre um, plane against a bunch of specialized Cracker Jacks. So, oh yeah. So, what, what's up with the HE-100D1? Um, the reality is it's actually a really, really good airframe, well balanced. You've got excellent altitude, excellent airspeed, and really good maneuverability for that airspeed and altitude. You may have already noticed what its biggest issue is though. You have guns that would make a tier 3 fighter weep at weakness. These guns are ridiculously weak, and they're what really kill this plane. It's going to be basically what we talk about the most. You have three 30 caliber, not 30 millimeter, 30 caliber machine guns uh, that do mediocre damage at best. Good thing is they're centrally located at least, so you've at least got this you know, ability to focus fire. But but that's it when it comes to the strengths of the guns on this plane. There's so many good things about the plane, though, itself. Again, I, I gotta reiterate, great altitude performance for what it is, good airspeed for what it is. It's actually one of the, the, you know, it's on the higher end of the speed spectrum. It's certainly on the higher end of the altitude spectrum when it comes to Tier 5 fighters. And it's certainly the most maneuverable of the altitude fighters. And so I want to like this plane, but it's just, uh, if it could have, I don't know, 50 caliber machine guns would, would make my life uh, a lot easier. Maybe, you know, two thirties and a 20, that would be cool, but otherwise we're just going to like, let's massage this guy down. Good thing about 30 caliber machine guns is you can literally just hold it. And that's kind of what you got to do, though. So it's not like it's a super perk, because you have to do that for these guns to be effective. Oh, hello, sir. You really do want to try to go against fighters as often as possible, just because the health pool of fighters is going to be so much less. Takes forever to kill just those guys, even, so... Oi. Oi. Can I get my wing back in before this heavy fighter comes and smacks me? Freaking XP 54 in it. Classy dude. Hmm. I've got a duel against an XP 54. Let's see what we can do here. He's gonna keep turning. You might be a very turny fighter, I mean, tur turny heavy fighter, but you obviously don't know what you're going against. It's still taking me forever, even though. I'm gonna say I'm freaking moved my mouse off my godforsaken mouse pad. Um, that was kind of funny. I actually really enjoyed that, as you typically do. When you're, uh, ooh, I'm gonna die here just because there's so many freaking rear gunners.
<sighs> oh well. Oh, I meant. Well, wait, I meant this plane sucks. The plane doesn't actually suck. The guns suck. But we've already mentioned that. Let's go ahead and move along here. Our team's doing really well. I'm doing okay. Uh, we've got a P-39N that's doing some heavy lifting here. And we'll take that. Let's head to the center and try to defend a little bit. Unfortunately, we're just kind of stuck in the middle. As, as well balanced as this airframe is, it can't necessarily be the center of attention. Oh well, get rammed by uh, an XP-54, I suppose, what do you expect? Um, but I think we're still set up to win the battle. Yeah, we've got this other sector here. So luckily we just keep pressuring, right? Keep pressuring and we'll be doing fine. Obviously we're leveraging the fact that we've got two other players that are actually able to, I don't know, do damage. This is one of those situations, it doesn't matter how good the airframe is, if you're not able to put out the damage, or if it takes you so long to put out damage, there's uh, there's only so much you can do about it. Um, I'm going to aim a little bit low here. Yeah, there we go. To get this plane for free, it's certainly not a bad thing. It's a fun enough plane. I suspect it would be more fun if um, you know you're in a flight with somebody who can compensate your weaknesses, and where you can kind of compensate for their weaknesses, kind of situation. Oh, you couldn't even let me get the kill. I don't even know what's going on. There's a heavy storm here. Unable to proceed. Return into base. Do you copy? Um, let's see here. Riding the other team, the the friendlies coattails here at this point. Um, their XP54 is doing XP54 things. Oh wait a minute, who said something? Oh, that four U's dead. That's not good. Oh here, I'm gonna defend this sector because there's really. Oh, maybe not. Zoom out if I can. Go. So can't pay attention to him. Use our airspeed versus this guy. Talk about opposite planes. XP 54 is like everything that this plane isn't. We'll zoom away. We're not going to try to turn fight this guy, but if he keeps turning, oh, he's turning versus P 39. But he's getting picked apart. Cool. We were able to save that. Great job today. Phew. We'll be waiting for you the fact I got top three makes me kind of happy. Let's take a look at the second battle. Alright, so this time we are in a tier five battle. This will be few and far between. Probably, probably I'd say one out of every three battles will be tier five. And we've got a specialized Spitfire one. Obviously, he can outturn us. Everything else we should be able to deal with relatively easily. We have a B-17D and a bow fighter on our team. We can't do anything at a mining facility, especially at a mining facility that will have no enemies. 
let's go ahead and head over to the garrison. My thought process is go garrison, go center, probably go here, maybe go here to be a pain in the butt. Problem with the HE-100 is it's, it's not very good at taking on anything that's not a fighter. Like it just takes too long to kill a bomber. Can you imagine? I mean, look, look how long it's taking to kill a heavy fighter here. I can't even kill it. To kill a bomber would take me forever in a day. To kill a ground attacker would take me forever in a day. So what we're going to do here is try to focus on the sectors that have aircraft to actually kill. I know, this is a joyous plane, isn't it? Yeah, my thoughts exactly right. I swear he said no. Cool, let's head across to the center. Again, I want to like the plane. The, the, I mean, I can't reiterate this enough. The airframe itself gives a lot of flexibility. Oh, I need to go up high? Cool gonna go up high. I can do it. Do I need a dogfight? Literally anything Spitfire excluded. I can dogfight anything else here and feel very comfortable with my flexibility. Do I need to speed outspeed somebody? Consider it done. I will do that. Uh, obviously it's not top on any, you know, anything in that, but in, in situations I can figure out if I'm the speediest, if I'm the turniest, if I'm the altitudiest, and I can very easily come out on top in those engagements. But the guns are just so weak, and it's not like F-86 balance with weak guns, right? What do I mean by that? The F-86 at tier 10, the American uh, tier 10 fighter, is known for its weak guns, but it is incredibly good at everything else. Those guns might be weak, but they're not anemic. They're not downright terrible. They're just weak compared to everything else at that tier. But they still can do the damage needed. This plane's guns... This plane's guns are, like I said in the first battle, are, are are okay for tier three <laughs> like okay not even you know good just okay and that's what you're stuck with here so let's go they got an xp Ooh, this is, you can do 14 damage cool let's go ahead and get rid of this guy Unfortunately, I'm actually going to overheat my freaking cannons. My cannons, my machine guns, I wish they were cannons. Cool. Let's get our boost on. Excellent. See, the, the flexibility of the airframe is nice. What do I need to do? I can try to do it might take me 45 minutes to do anything once I get there. But I can do it. You know what kind of reminds me of? At Tier 4, there's an American Premium Fighter. The Model 81A. I honestly think the guns on the Model 81A are better, and those are known for their weak, weak impact. It's just 250 caliber machine guns. But 250 caliber machine guns bigger impact than 330 caliber machine guns. And we gotta head back to the center. The Spitfire got the center. So let's head there. Um, alrighty. Ooh, I don't like getting stuck in, but we're gonna have to get stuck in. Certainly not as turning as boomerangs, so just kind of taking advantage of what's going on here. Sure hope 
my, there we go. Let's go ahead and get back to this garrison over here. We are up by a decent amount of points. Uh, certainly don't, it's not the end of the world if they get three sectors to our two. We're that far ahead, but I don't want to necessarily have it set to go. Okay, there's that Spitfire. Let's go ahead and get our, I'm going to save my boost just in case I need to run away bravely. He's trying to go high. That's actually really good. Because he doesn't have the altitude we've got. I'm going to wait till I'm reasonably close. There we go. Let's go ahead and get our turn on. I don't need to worry about my engine power. He's got his engine knocked out. What I'm doing here is just using my pneumatic control assist to... Um, use my pneumatic control assist to outturn him. Since he didn't have any engine power, I could outturn him. There we go, available. got it. Victory is in sight. Keep it up. Get some hits here. We're going to boost down, boost up. Stick on this guy. He can't get away. All I can do is hope that a friendly tries to save him before I kill him. Because it's going to take me 45 minutes to kill him. Come on. Come on. There we go. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. There's the heavy storm right. here. Small lines in. Return into base. Do you copy? Actually having a pretty good impact here. They're too... Oh, did they quit? They did quit. And their Spitfire's out. So now the game the game is well and truly over. Uh, we're going to see if we can knock out this ground attacker. I think this will give us a McCampbell, which would be hilarious. If I can get him. It's going to take... Nope, I'm not going to be able to get him this time. Nope. Great job today. We'll be waiting for you back home. Could have had it. Oh, you expect to get these. Any of those assists? Yeah, you'll get the assist badges pretty easily with this plane. <laughs> Let's take a look at our two battles. First battle there, we died three times. Get used to that. Only got seven kills. Get used to that. And captured one sector. Eh. We only captured one sector. Oh, yeah, because I died before we could actually capture that other garrison. I mean, never captured anything else. This is a prime example. You're going to run into a lot of tier 6 battles, and you're going to be reasonably ineffective. Again, the HE-100, it's got objectively good airframe with objectively terrible guns. And considering where tier 6 is right now, it's it's in, the, the HE-100 D-1 is in a bad place. Even in a tier 5 battle. Let's take a look at the second battle. All right, so in that second battle, we had 15 kills, five sectors captured, a lot better impact when you're able to, to dictate. But like I said, that's only gonna be like one out of every three. The majority of the battles you're gonna run into are gonna be tier six, but that is what it is. We were able to come out on top here and have a pretty darn good impact. Obviously our bow fighter was having a really good impact as well. Unfortunately, these two guys decided that, you know, one was all that they needed to do. So he did not get the, the assists that he really needed then again he only captured one sector so you know he needed to be capturing as many sectors as possible i've already said everything i need to say really on the he 100 d1 as far as the plane it itself is concerned great airframe absolutely trash guns good thing is it is a premium plane so you can put any pilot in it that you want i have my 1101 pilot in here which is going to significantly help the the plane itself my base equipment that i put on here is the balanced approach because this is a well-balanced airframe Got some, some lightweight wing frame. We have the uprated engine. As far as the equipment is concerned, I've put the collimator sight simply because the cockpit armor doesn't make any sense. And then I've got my standard consumable layout for my starting fighters. Once I specialize it, I don't know, I probably will put a lightweight wing, uh, lightweight power unit on here. And for the additional consumable here, honestly, probably put the improved mixture control simply because the engine doesn't get knocked out all that often. So getting extra speed, getting extra maneuverability, try to help this, this plane be a little bit better. Not that I'm in a rush to get it specialized by any means. So if Wargaming had this plane for sale or it was available for gold or some sort of package you could get, it would be a firm no. 
don't go get this plane. There's so many better tier five premium planes that you can go get. It's just, it's not worth it. It's not worth the frustration. And yeah, don't do that. But the fact of the matter is you can actually earn this plane for free. It's a fun enough plane if you're out in a flight of them or a flight with a, a better plane uh, where you're able to be a good support plane, which is what this plane is. It is not a uh, alpha plane. It is definitely, I don't even know what, what's, what's below. It's like a delta plane. I don't even know. So to earn it for free, it's not, that's not a bad thing. Beyond that as well, the missions that you can use to get this plane have pretty darn good rewards. Maybe better combined than the actual plane itself. It's, these missions start on the 13th, so that was a couple days ago. Uh, mission number one, destroy 100, 100 enemy aircraft in any number of battles. You earn a ultimate collimator sight, pretty darn good, uh, and 10 tokens. Quest two, destroy 300 enemy aircraft in any number of battles. You get an ultimate gyroscopic site for period three and 15 tokens. Part three, participate in capturing 150 sectors in any number of battles. You get an ultimate engine protection for period two and 10 tokens. And then participate in capturing 350 sectors in any number of battles. You get ultimate engine protection for period three and 15 tokens. Once you've completed all four of those, you get the plane, you get a slot, you get a six point pilot, and you get three unique supply crates. So again, it's not really about this plane. I'd love to say this plane is worth that. Again, I'm gonna beat a dead horse here, but the airframe is, the guns completely kill this plane and make it kind of frustrating to say the least. It does look like the missions can be completed at the same time, meaning that the 100 enemy aircraft kills that are needed for part one also go towards part two. So you don't need to do 100 plus 300 to complete part two. You just need to complete the 300. We'll verify that once the missions actually start. That's really all there is to it. I'll leave a link to the webpage for the missions themselves for World of Warplanes. Feel free to comment down below. We'll continue the conversation there. I would ask if you think I'm out of left field here, but I know for a fact that nobody thinks this plane is overly good. Uh, that's why so many people request it when I live stream because they like to see me wriggle and you love me all so much. Otherwise, we can continue the conversation in my Discord as well. And I'll catch up with you later. Have a great day. Bye.